Are you looking for a technique to add a bit of artistic flair to your journaling cards? Or maybe you just need some ephemera with a kick. If you're a junk journaler or an art journaler, or maybe you just want a postcard that you can stick in the mail that has a bit of flair, take a look at these. And over the next few minutes, I am going to show you how I made them. My name is Peg, and I call my channel Two Old Crows and Mixed Media. I like to journal, so I create a lot of journals on my channel, as well as other techniques and art forms that I'm getting into, one being encaustic wax, learning it. And on my channel, you'll find all kinds of things from journals to ATCs to pockets to altered playing cards. If you like that type of variety, hit that subscribe button. The notification bell lets you know when I upload additional content. To get started on this project, I began with a watercolor paper. I always lay a sheet of packing paper down on my table and to avoid ripping it with the artistic tape that I am utilizing or the artist tape that I am utilizing, I laid a deli sheet down. I cut my watercolor paper into about two inch by four inch pieces and I am taping off just a section of that to illustrate in or to play in. So it is perhaps a one and a half inch by three inch area, but do it so that it's appealing to you. Do it so it fits your eye. This is what I came up with. You can see I'm not measuring. I'm just eyeballing it and taping it to the deli sheet. Once I have it all taped down, I brought out my gel press and my favorite pink color, which is cool gray. So with that cool gray, I'm going to lay a bit of it down onto my gel press and run my brayer through it. Once I have the ink or the paint on my brayer, I'm going to very lightly just skim over the top of that card. No full contact, just trying to get some paint down. I picked up this new color when I was shopping the last time. It is called Metallic Bronze. And I thought this would be a good opportunity to try it out. Putting a dab of that onto the gel press, and I am going to utilize a paintbrush to just dab it into place. As I find appealing to my eye with the paintbrush. So just dab, dab, dab away. Nothing that requires a tremendous amount of skill in this particular card. So we have that into place. The next step that I wanna take is to make sure this is good and dry. So there's two things that you can do. You can leave it to air dry, walk away from it for a while, take your, your deli sheet, move it to another side of your table, or you can pull out a hair dryer or your heat gun and, and get that nice and dry. Once dry, I've taped off a section of this stencil that I want to use. So right now I'm trying to figure out exactly where on that that I am going to place the stencil. Once I've decided on placement, which you know really isn't that overly um, difficult, I am pulling some black texture paste through that stencil. This black texture paste is left over from a composition notebook journal that I recently did. So I'll link that here and you can go take a look at that and you can uh, see that uh, texture paste uh, being made, which is just a combination of Elmer's glue, black paint, and some baby powder. So nothing, nothing seriously complicated there either. And I am pulling that paste through the stencil with a hotel key card and just getting it nice and smooth and a thin layer down onto the paper. And there you go. So that pretty much completes this card. So it needs to dry. That paint tape needs to come off. 
And I wind up going to um, washi tape because this tape has a tendency to tear my paper. I also took my gold pen and just did some asymmetric writing up the corner and added a few liquid pearl dots. So if you're liking what you see, hit that like button for me. It helps my channel exponentially. For the next one, we're going to do the same thing, only we're starting with a turquoise color. This is a green turquoise, or turquoise green, I think is the name of the color. Did the same thing, just brayered it on very quickly. That metallic bronze, going to hit that with a little bit of that metallic bronze. Just dabbing dabbing into place. And now the stencil, I've chosen a different stencil and as you can see I've taped it off, taped it off so I'm not going to get that um, texture paste into areas that it does not need to be. Dabbing it on with a popsicle stick and or a craft stick actually and then pulling it through the stencil with that hotel key card. And the whole purpose for these cards, honestly, was to use up this black texture paste. I had made it for another project. There was some left over. I've kept it covered for a week because I only get, have the opportunity to work in my workshop over the weekends. I have a full-time job that is very, very demanding. So it is. this is my stress relief um, get away from the job on the weekend. So I did the same thing, did some mark making with some black Sumi ink and put a few liquid pearl drops on and I will call these complete. So now we have made four journaling cards. It is the holiday season, so why not make some holiday flavored cards to put in our journals or send out as Christmas cards. So I started the same process, used some crimson red and added, dabbed in that uh, metallic bronze. As you can see here, I'm illustrating what I have done. And now to mix up some texture paste because I used all the black and I actually want a different color. So in comes a little bit of baby powder to the eye. I'm pulling out my gallon of Elmer's glue I'll put a bit of the Elmer's glue in there and start to mix that up and then add some acrylic white paint to get it to the texture that will work well for texture paste. And I just use the acrylic white that you can get at the big box um, home goods store, Home Depot, Lowe's, those type of places. Um, Walmart has it here in the U.S., those, those type of stores. So I'm mixing that all together until at the proper consistency. Now, if I wanted to add color, this would be the time that I would add a little bit of my heavy body paint in or um, the, even the medium body paint to just alter the color of that texture paste. So we have that complete. Now let's pull it through a stencil onto these crimson red and metallic bronze cards. I'm choosing a snowflake and just adding it to each. I'm gonna move pretty rapidly here from card to card because I want to utilize embossing powder on these. And in order for that embossing powder to work, there needs to be some moisture. So I wanna make sure that that texture paste doesn't set up before I have a chance to sprinkle my embossing powder on top. Utilizing a um, mirror gold embossing powder. Oh, I'm sorry, I chose the silver. So while well, I thought mirror gold might not be bad in the voiceover, I actually used the silver and I think I chose the silver to um, be in direct opposition to the bronze color. And I have that all in place now. I'm gonna tear off these little sheets that I put down to protect the bottom of this card and put that embossing powder back into its container. 
And once that is done, I am going to make sure that this is set up well by pulling my heat gun out and just utilizing it to set that embossing powder. And I'm putting the heat, you know, on and off to avoid the bubbling of that texture paste. So once done, now it's time to tear off that washi tape, but not before we add a few little sprinkles. And I'm going to utilize the, um, what my thought process was in here, and, and it didn't work out. So I'm telling you right now. So I thought I will sprinkle on some uh, Mod Podge or that glue and water mixture, get a little moisture and add some uh, embossing powder. It, it, it didn't work. So that was a good idea in theory, but not a good technique in practice. So you can avoid that step, but I wanted to take you through my complete process here. So now I've decided just to dot myself some little uh, silver, silver snow, pieces of snow with my silver pen and use that for my moisture for the embossing powder. And that did work. So now we have a little snowy, snowy area around that snowflake with the silver. We'll pull that tape off. And again, this is the uh, defective washi tape that I had, so I thought it would be a good use because it's not so sticky. Now, I have heard that if you have that artist tape, that when you pull it off, if you take it and put it against your clothes a couple of times to remove some of that adhesive, it won't, um, it won't tear your paper. But if anyone knows of a good tape to use on watercolor paper that will not tear the watercolor paper, I would love to know. So I took my silver pen that uh, is just a craft smart pen, wrote Happy Holidays on the bottom of each card, and took that pen and, and went around the outside edge of each card to just give it a little bit of a silver lining. And now, to complete, we'll add three dots of the gold liquid pearls on each card. And then I think I'm going to go back and dot that eye in holiday with uh, the liquid pearls. So we'll put another little liquid pearl dot down there right above that eye, right there. One more. And the final card. And there you have it. So quick and easy, three different journaling cards. You can turn these over, put your plain paper on the back, leave them as is. They tuck great down into a journal. These could easily be stuck inside a small envelope and mailed out as a holiday greeting. There's a little close up of this one. And I hope you have enjoyed making the three different journaling cards that we made during this particular video. Give me that thumbs up. It helps a lot. And I would love to have you subscribe and join me on my journey learning this mixed media world. Thanks so much and bye for now.